Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to another video. I wanted to share something with you all about what not to do or why not to send your venison or your wild game to a processor. And I'm not bagging on all processors. processors. They're not all bad, but you can do a much better job at home and it's a lot easier. And I thought this would be a really good time to do it because I got my buddy Tim here who just saw, shot a beautiful axis here in Texas with my buddy Charles and we're breaking it down. We're going to go back to Oklahoma and I thought, you know what? I want to share this video because this is one of the things that I've learned from Chef Albert where I've learned so much from in the last four years. So uh, I thought I'd share it with you guys about what not to do at a processor or actually what a processor it's hard to say what a processor will do with your hind quarter. So when you go and drop something off at, at the processor and you say, hey, um, give me some steaks, some roast and grind the rest. That's what most people say. Well, you're not specific about steaks. So most people are like, okay, I'm getting a sirloin, I'm getting a ribeye, I'm getting a T-bone or something along those lines. Yeah. What you end up with is round steaks. And a lot of people don't know what a round steak is. I didn't. I, when I think of round steak, I think of uh, hamburger steak is what right. I think of for some yeah. reason. You know? So what they do for efficiency, and a lot of times you don't know if you're getting your own back. So like when we were, uh, whenever we, we did this one, super careful, it was very clean, it wasn't gut shot, it stayed clean, it didn't get dirt on it. And so you know that it was taken care of properly. You drop it back off the processor, you don't know that you're getting yours back. Not saying that they all do that, but true it, it could happen so you say you want your steaks they're running hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deer through so they're taking a bandsaw and they're pushing it through making the cuts but what they're doing that with is the hind quarter the hind right. quarter has seven or eight muscles depending on which muscles uh, that you that you count and they're taking the whole hind quarter and they're pushing it through and if you've seen it whenever it comes back it has the bone through it well you've got your your bone that goes all the way down the center and it looks like a ha like whenever you cut uh thanksgiving or christmas ham yeah. and it's got the bone in it that's what this is so why is that bad though i just assume that that they were just making steaks out of the hind quarter instead of the, the, grinding it all what what makes it bad that's that's what we're getting ready to show you so you got like seven different muscles in here right but on the inside is why you don't want to do it because you've got all your fascia all your silver skin there's glands in there and you're cutting through every bit of it and now if you're relatively new to this and you've got this this brown steak with the bone in you're like i'm gonna go through this on the grill and we'll make steaks for the family i kind of assumed that those lines like i sort of associated that with like marbling or fat lines in it but uh -uh. that's actually not the case it, it, it could some of it could be but most of it most of it prob probably not so now you've got you've got this um, piece of meat and you're gonna go through it in the yeah. grill because it says steaks. Yeah. It says steaks on the packaging that you got back and you go through it in the grill and if it you've ever done it. It up like half a size and, and it and it folds up like bologna. Yeah. Have you ever done bologna in the uh, in, in the frying pan? The it, corners it, all roll it, up and Yep. And that's what it does. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open this up and show you why you don't want to do that. Also, how easy it is. Doing this at home is so much easier now than, it, than it's ever been. One, because of all the tools that are available. Uh, obviously, knives are always available, but you've, uh, you know, you've got your own grinders, you've got mixers, you've got vacuum sealers. You can just keep everything at home and do it yourself. I didn't do it myself for years for that exact reason. I thought it was too hard and it would take too long. You know the best thing I got to do this <laughs> Greg. <laughs> well, the best thing I got is four chefs yeah. that, that work for Outdoor Solutions. So that's where I've learned from. I am nowhere near their skill level, but I've learned a lot. I know how to do it. It takes me 10, 10 times as long, um, but I enjoy doing it. Deborah and I do a lot of this together. So first thing that we're going to do is, you see this line right here? Mm -hmm. So that actually follows the bone. Um, I don't know if that's the, fe is it the femur on the, on the hind bone. See, it tells, tells you how much I know. I I mean, on us, it'd be the femur that comes from the hip to the knee. Anyway, it's That'd a bone be... that goes down the middle of all the meat. Yeah. <laughs> so this this line will will follow follow that down. Now you don't want shows you how sharp my knife is. I just barely touched that. But anyway, so you just you just start going down to to the bone. What we're going to do is take this bone out, and then I'm going to lay this open and show you the inside of what it looks like, and show you why you don't want to uh, have yours cut as steak. So. We're going to work on this. We're going to get the um, the bone out, and then um, I'll show you then what the whole inside looks like.
Okay, so we've got, yeah, there's the leg bone off. So you still got the heel on there and then um, uh, the shank, which has the most flavor. And you could use that for asabuco, which is what most people know it for. Or you could actually just pull the shank off. Um, I like to um, brine it and use it for corn venison is my favorite thing to do with it. Some people grind it. I don't like to grind it because it has tons and tons of tendons in it and it'll clog up your grinder. But some people still do it anyway. So uh, that's, that's what I like to do. We're gonna set that to the side. Now that we've got the bone out, what I wanna show you is why you don't want to just cut across because they would cut it this way. Some of it, it would go against the grain, but some of it would go with the grain. So part of it's gonna be tender, part of it's gonna be chewy but it's still not going to taste great. So if we were to open this up, you're gonna start seeing all, look at all the sinew and, and fat and silver skin that's in there. And you've got a lot of prime cuts in here. You've got a lot of tender cuts. You've got some uh, less than tender cuts. And really the only tough cut is what just came off of the hind quarter. But if you look at all of this right here, this is what they're cutting into steaks. All the stuff that's in here is going to be uh, in those so-called round steaks that you're trying to throw on a grill and you've just got nothing but a huge mess. And wow. there's so, instead, what we're going to do is break it down and we'll go through each individual muscle and kind of talk a little bit about what you can do with it uh, and the different um, cooking methods uh, with it. So uh, one of the things that Chef Albert does that really helped me that the, the light bulb kind of went off is like, I don't know what cuts what and what do I do with it? How do I cook it? And really, they're all broke down into just three categories. A muscle's either going to be tender, it's going to be less than tender, or it's going to be tough. So there's, so there's three categories. Now, each one of those three categories is going to have multiple cooking methods. And we've got that on our website. So if you all go to uh, from fieldtotable.com and click on butchering, you'll see a elk graphic there and you can hover over the different sections and then another window pops up and it'll show you each individual muscle that we're working on right here and it'll tell you what category it falls in. Then if you click on it, it'll give you all of the cooking methods um, for that particular yeah, cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the other thing about the hind quarter is it's super easy to break down. Cause I mean, I, you can the really almost- look really defined. They are very defined. So, I mean, you can almost do it without a knife, but see how there's just seams everywhere. Now that your deer had a ton of fat a lot of fat so like normally you would see this seem pretty predominant uh, this is the uh, eye round next to the bottom round uh, but we can't really see that one but between the eye round and the top round you can see and so now all I gotta do is just follow that seam and cut that off so now you've got the top round it's still got some uh, fat on it sinew but if you look at it you see it's kind of how it's kind of heart shaped is this the one that has the cap Yes. Okay. Yeah, and we're going to show, we'll show everybody here in just a second. Uh, so what Tim's referring to is the top round here, which is a tender cut, and we'll go a little bit more into detail. And it has a cap on it. And if you look right here, see, it just, it's just another seam. And that cap sits right on top of the main part of the muscle. And technically, I think that part is tender as well. But we just, um, we separate it and I put it in my grind pile. And the reason I do that, now there's other things that you can do with it. We do a lot of grind at home. Uh, is that at, at our house, we probably 85, 90% wild game. And grind is just efficient, it's fast, it's easy. Um, but it's like anything else too, it's gonna be as good as what you put into it or maybe what you don't put into it. You still it have to- more time on the processing side. Yes. So once you're done and it's you know thrown in the freezer, as far as cooking goes, it's way faster. Um, yeah, I think it was, um, Charles was just telling us a minute ago, uh, one of the, the places that he's familiar with, I won't say any names, but um, whenever they do their, their grind, they leave a lot of this stuff on. And whenever you go to eat just a hamburger, you can tell that it's in there. Just out of curiosity, why not, why not leave that on there, like if you're gonna make steaks out of that top round, because why it, take the cap off? Because whenever you go to um, cook it, it's gonna separate anyway, it's gonna just fall off, and it's gonna it's gonna cook different than the whole, so if I, if I were to cut this in steaks and leave yeah. that cap on, it's gonna separate anyway, and so you'll get this that will overcook. Okay. It'll cook too fast um, to where this will all cook uh, evenly. So now you have just one solid piece of muscle. Yeah, actually you, there's two there. That's a really good question. So you see there's another seam right here, yeah. So that's called the head. 
uh, of, the, of the top round. Now the, the muscles are the same. There's really nothing different of them that, that, that I know of, but there is another, another place to separate them. So if you were gonna cut this for steaks, would you go uh, yeah. this way against the grain, keeping those two pieces connected, or would you split them? I in? would probably go ahead and, and separate them, but you always want your final cut that's going to go on the plate. You always want it to be against the grain. Oh, that's true. Because so uh, you go with the grain for the steaks. So against, that, against the grain. Okay. Because if the steak is going to go on your plate, you want your final your final cut to be against the grain to go on your plate. So oh, like gosh. for like for this one right here. Let's get this out of the way. That's the cap. So let's go ahead and just separate this. Yeah, that's a super easy example because the mm -hmm. grain is so... It's so predominant. It's very easy to see. So there's there's the cap. So like I could probably use this. No, from, I, I would clean this head. up. Uh, oh, I'm the head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just took the, already took the cap off. So I would clean this up. Um, probably something like that. I'd probably use that for grind. And now I've got this piece, so I would probably use this from a dines. It's not yeah. as pretty as this is, so I would cut that, or, or you could make uh, you can make chops with it uh, if you wanted to, uh, and and do it separately. And but now this one, so you look at that grain. I mean, it's very predominant. Yeah. So you want your final cut. We're going to go against the grain. When you say your final cut, I'm thinking when I cut it to put it in my mouth. No. But you're talking about your final cut, what you're going to cook for the plate. Correct. You want it to be against the grain. Correct. Because if you go with the grain, it makes it more chewy. Same way with like when we do jerky. You can do jerky two different ways. If you like your jerky to be a little softer, uh, it's actually the opposite. If you like it to be a little softer, you actually cut with the grain. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, that when you bite it, you're splitting the, you know, you're pulling the off fibers. this piece. Yeah. 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 yeah That's so, why that confused me. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's actually the, the, the opposite. So yeah, that, that is kind of weird. Huh. So now for, you know, if we're going to make a steak, would yep. you, however thick, however thick you want, you're going to go against the grain and literally throw it on, on the grill. That's, that's your top round or inside round is what, is what that one's called. So that, that would be totally wasted on a, a round steak at your, at your processor. At yes. And that is, this, this is my favorite cut on the entire animal. Everybody always likes the tenderloins and the back straps, which, yeah, those are great. Uh, this has more flavor and it's a lot more versatile. I can do a lot more with this hmm. than that. So, um, the other thing also, see if we can find it in here. There is a, um, uh, oh, the, a Easter egg uh, gland. Gee, there is, there's a gland in here, here it yeah. is right here. There's a gland in there. It's just a little nodule. It's kind of gray, and um, you don't want to eat that. It is nasty. And they, they, if they're using like you said a bandsaw to do that, they can't get to that. No, no. To take it out. Uh uh. See, look here. And you'll get up there close. See right there. That's it. So it's in, it's in between the bottom round and your eye round. So I'm gonna try to cut around it. Hmm. See there. Does it smell? Oh, you tell me. <laughs> I don't think it does. <laughs> it doesn't. I didn't know if it had like a ruddy smell on a, yeah, no, a white tail. No, no, it's, no, it's not that kind. So now the rest of it, now we've got, um, so we've got your eye around, uh, which is really classified as a less than tender cut. You're going to use it for, um, uh, I use it a lot for stir fries. Get rid of some of this fat. So cut it into medallions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I cut, it cut it thin and just cook it really, really quick. Um, so dry, dry cooking method, but I, I usually just sear it and we do a lot of stir fries. Stir fries and grind are our favorites because they're always, they're all fast. You, you started to get into it earlier and then you stopped. So tender, less than tender. And tough. And tough. Mm -hmm. Tender is high fast heat. Mm -hmm. Less than tender is. Is can be a combination of either uh, high fast dry heat or, or moist. Uh, heat, so a combination cooking, okay. and then the tough cuts is always uh, moist cooking methods. Crock pot. Yep. Pressure cooker. Yep. Okay. Um, so this uh, this is your eye around that you can use, like I said, for uh, multiple multiple cooking methods uh, with it. Then this one, this one's kind of cool. Uh, Chef Albert calls this one the football. It's technically the sirloin tip, and on top of it is. Um, the tri-tip. Now the tri-tip was really made popular in California and they grill it just like a, um, just like a steak, but on um, venison, um, really not so much because uh, it's, it's, too, it's too small. 
see if I can get it pulled off here and I'll, I'll show you real on, especially on a, even though this is a, a really big axis, uh, the tri-tip's really small and it always goes in my grind pile unless it's an elk or a moose. Uh, and really even just the, uh, the moose uh, is one that I try to cook like, like beef in there, but let's get this thing off first. All right, so that is um, your sirloin tip, which uh, you can use as a uh, roast. Uh, this is one that you could corn. I know you yeah. like corn venison, so this would be a really good one for corn venison. You would inject it and brine it and, uh, and then cube it up and uh, make corn venison uh, out of it. Also makes really good jerky. Oh, really? Mm hmm Yep. And then sitting on top of that, see if I can get it off of here. It's really small and yours, like I said, yours has a ton of fat, but this muscle, that's right here. You can only see just a little, yeah. just a little bitty guy. That's the tri-tip. On a, a beef cow, it's really, really good. And then the last muscle that we're going to pull off here, I'm just going to, actually I started to do it that way. See, all you gotta do is just find the seams. See how easy that's coming apart there? Here's your bottom round. This is the one I love pastrami, especially off of a bear. So this is one that I'll make pastrami out of, but this is also my go-to for corn venison. So that's less than tender or? Less than tender, less, less than, than tender. tender. Mm -hmm. You could on like maybe a dough or something, you probably make steaks out of it. I normally don't because I'm always brining it and just cause we like yeah. corn venison at, at home so much. So, and I mean, that's a pretty good size. And then uh, this last part, it's got so much fat on it. Let's see if I can get it separated here so I can show you. Cause this is one that gets messed up a lot. I'll find my seams here real quick and get this tri-tip off. But I wanted to show you the sirloin butt. A lot of guides and outfitters, Charles is not listening so I can say this, uh, especially on elk, just because on elk it's bigger. Uh, the sirloin butt, let's get some of this fat off so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, but there, there's your sirloin butt, and it sits just right on the top of the of the hip. And what happens is out in the field, a lot of your guides will cut right through it. Yeah. You know, um, and I've been guilty of just get in a hurry. Yep. Come down around and cut it short. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cut it short, and, and on elk, you know, obviously it's you know it's going to be like this big. And that's it's, it's much larger. That's a tender cut. Tender, yeah. Uh, I use this one. I don't really use this one as much for steaks, but I use this one a lot for stir fries. Uh, you could also roast it, uh, but yeah, it's uh, got lots of flavor and, and, it's, and it's really good. And it, I mean, didn't take us that long. Uh, no. <laughs> didn't take you that long at all, you know, to, to break that down into separate pieces. Yeah, so you look at all these different muscles. No. Um, what do we got here? So this is everything that your processor is going to cut through. And you've got some awesome choices here other than making the whole dang thing. Uh, round steaks. So again, just to kind of recap, you've got your top round or inside round, uh, which like I said is my favorite. Now this one's already been broke down. It's had the head cut off of it and the uh, and the cap taken off of it, but very tender, very tender sirloin butt. Uh, and then uh, less than tender, you have your eye around, uh, which you can use multiple cooking methods. Less than tender, your bottom round, and then your um, sirloin uh, tip. Uh, that you can do quite a bit with as well. It is a lesson tender. So you've got a lot of different options, a lot of different recipes, a lot of different things that you can do with this other than telling your processor to cut through it and make round steaks with it. So for more information on these type of tips, go to our website from fieldtotable.com, click on butchering, and there's all kinds of stuff on there. There's videos from our chef team that know a whole lot more than I do. That's where I've learned from. And then also check out our membership exclusive information, which is membership dot from field to table dot com where you get all types of exclusive information and videos that we do specifically for our members it's uh, 129 dollars a year but you get everything there's nothing additional for you to buy in there lots of recipes butchering tips cooking tips pretty much anything that you can think of and we do live events on there with our chef team so anyway appreciate you guys hanging out and watching us make sure you hit that subscribe button help us out we do these for free it helps us out helps our partners out, uh, our Made With Meat and Camp Chef, uh, let them know that we're doing work for them as well. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next video. Appreciate the help. Nice.
Looks so much better than when we get back from the... Oh, yeah.